Hi, this is Scott Garibay. Today we're going to talk about Runehammer Games Bearcats and the plus one session we did for the Runehammer Games Bearcats GX5 one shot. Uh, so you can listen to the um, breakdown of the GX5 uh, one shot right here on my on my on this channel. And um, and so essentially uh, that one shot using Runehammer Games uh, Bearcats Battle World and the index card RPG 2 second edition rule set uh, was very successful. We had three players in the first session and uh, and then at that uh, and it did very well and uh, I was requested to run an, you know uh, uh, to run another game and so we added another another session onto that one shot which did uh, really well. We had a really, really good time with it. Really enjoyed it. Um, so so here's here's what happened in that in that second session. So uh, in the first session, uh, the alien invasion happened on uh, TC three three seven, and we use you know we used the the pure structure that uh, was presented within Runehammer Games Bearcats. We used uh, essentially um, the spiders and the juggers, the alpha, the tank, the skelly. Um, used all, the relays. Used all uh, six of those elements. For the invasion fleet, right, uh, and also the dropship, of course. So, like, there's seven elements to to the uh, to the actual alien invasion. Uh, one thing that's really really neat about the Bearcat setup is it has uh, Terran weapons, and then it has uh, these alien invasion weapons. I I applied the ner term Sunax to the aliens uh, in my game, so we had you know all the Sunax weapons, which were like Atmo helmets, magnet guns, that kind of thing. Uh, the really the equipment in this game is really really phenomenal. It's it's really a template for how you should be building equipment for almost any tabletop role playing game. Each piece of equipment serves a purpose. It's not just a minor variation of another piece of equipment that's in the set. Uh, it's you know so that when when um, player characters are choosing equipment, it's it's not just a plus one or a plus two or some minor variation. There all the equipment really has a distinct purpose, and it really really was incredible. So, uh, in our first session, the alien invasion occurred with three player characters, Preacher Jonesy, uh, the mechanic George, and um, also uh, artist, Fairview College student, uh, Bobby Alden. And, um, and so, essentially, those are our player characters. And, essentially, they led um, all of the people who were in Fairview College into the woods, hid them there, and then out of that uh, group, out of the Bearcats, the, the football, the Fairview College football team, they formed a, a, an away team and went to the Pine Bluff supply area, uh, liberated all of the, the military garrison's weapons and brought them back to, um, brought them back to Fair, Fairview College where about 250, a group of 250 people uh, comprised of Fairview Bearcats, uh, Fairview Townies, Fairview Professors, Fairview College professors and Fairview College students um, were there. So there's about 250 people there, and they brought all the you know that weapons cache back so that those people would be able to defend themselves, right? And so and that was the end of, of session one. They had successfully um, brought people to safety in the um, in the uh, in the woods behind Fairview College, and then supplied them with something they needed with 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 supplies in order to fight back against the Sunak invasion. So the second session was really fun. Uh, our three players from the first session, only two were able to attend. Um, uh, Bobby Alden and uh, the, the player playing the Bobby, uh, the, the art student Bobby Alden. And then additionally, the, um, uh, additionally there was also um, the mechanic George, but the play, um, oh yeah, actually, uh, Preacher Jonesy was there, but missed the first half of the game, right? And so, I, whenever one of my player characters is out, is out, one of the players is out for the session, as quickly and conveniently as possible, I'll remove that player character. The reason why I do that is, you know, essentially from the narrative, right? In in a in a way that fits the narrative, and I do that in order to put as much shine on the people who are there, right? So uh, Preacher Jonesy was kind of out of the action for the first half of the uh, of the session uh, in the in this plus one that we added on to the. Um, onto the Runehammer Games Bearcats GX5 one shot. So it, uh, so basically in this in this game it picked up right from the right from the gate with everybody with all of those that weapons cache being supplied to the 250 people, right? Now the first thing that happened was uh, that the um, the art student uh, Bobby Alden 
immediately organized uh, the um, organized four tactical teams, right? And so those tactical teams were comprised of. Oh, I'm sorry. We also had two new players. So we had our two original players uh, who were playing uh, the mechanic George, uh, the art student Bobby Alden, and then we added two new players. So we had a new player, and that player elected to take the non-player character GX5, the Sunax Rebel, who was an AI, uh, an AI a drone uh, hosting an AI. Um, and he took that 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 non-player character over. So GX5 went from being a non-player character to being a player character, which worked out really well, uh, and you know, kind of really kind of added some life to that much-needed aspect of the game. And then we had a player who introduced Pauline Highwater, who was a another Fairview College student, a history major, who had studied fencing and actually had uh, competed in fencing. And uh, so she had a longsword in the game, which was really kind of unique and fun. Um, and, uh, and so we, we jumped right into the game with, uh, you know, joining all the, you know, that group of 250 Fairview people who, who essentially were, were, you know, hiding from the Sunex, which were still raiding the Fairview College. Fairview College was burning. There were, you know, clouds of smoke. There were fire everywhere. And so, you know, these people. So Bobby Alden grew, uh, formed everybody into four, uh, four tactical groups. Um, and then sent three of the tactical groups away. Now, the reason he did this was, you know, he realized, you know, these are the survivors. These are the people, you know, uh, live in this town um, and really kind of split them into almost a guerrilla style force and wanted to split everybody up so that there couldn't be one main attack from the alien invaders that would really take out the main forces of, Fair, of Fairview, right? So at this point, the player characters now have 75, a group of 75 civilians, right? Um, and m many of them are civilians, but they're now fighters, right? But they had 75 people that they needed to get to better safety than just in the woods, because that was only going to be an area of, ten that was really just an area of cover and hiding, right? It really was an area of safety. So the player characters thought about it, and uh, the mechanic, George, identified that, uh, actually asked, hey, are there steam tunnels under Fairview College? Now, of course, these are, you know, tabletop role-playing game players. So the term steam tunnel has special meaning to us. So, of course, there were steam tunnels under Fairview College. So while everybody had been removed, so while all the, the Fairview uh, professors, the Bearcats, the townies, the students had been removed into the forest, the, the move to get them to safety was to take them right back into Fairview College and get them all into the steam tunnels, right, this smaller group. Right, so they had to pass over an area of uh, a field area, and of course, and and so they had it. They had a stealth roll, uh, and they, they and uh, of course, one of the player characters failed the stealth roll. They were immediately attacked by juggers and by spiders. Right, uh, and there was the loss of, uh, but actually, the player characters uh, they were all geared. They each had a selection of three weapons from the Terran weapon supply, uh, the Terran weapons list. Right which really worked out incredibly well. Uh, the the Mac-22, Mac-17, um, the Scattergun, all of these were, you know, were used in the game. Uh, one of my players was a big fan of the art. Uh, the, yeah, there was a whole, you know, range, right? It was, it was, really, it was really quite interesting. Um, uh, and then, so, of course, they, they, get, into, they get into it with the, the Juggers and the Spiders. Um, one of the Rip Swords was, was pulled up, one of the Atmo helmets was pulled up, uh, and also two of the, um, energy shields, right? So at this point, uh, the player characters, um, both have, you know, Terran weapons and they have, uh, Sunax equipment, um, and, uh, and they were able to defeat, uh, the, this collection of juggers and spiders. Uh, it was, it was dangerous. And by the way, we, we did have one character, uh, that actually reached a, a death roll within within that can't, within that reach one had the roll and they had four um, four turns before you know that character would then be a non would would no longer be a, a living play, a player character right um, and one of the other player characters ran ran over stabilized them um, and that's really critical I love that aspect of of um, of Runehammer Games is the you know the death roll in Runehammer Games feels very visceral. It feels really, uh, it feels narratively powerful, right? And because these are only just normal humans, they only have one heart. They only have 10 hit points, right? So, so basically, 
uh, there really is a sense that the player characters from in each session are in danger, and when they're overcoming these obstacles, it, it feels you know genuine and exciting. Uh, so it's really really fun. So uh, all the player characters get their their twenty five percent of the the Fairview survivors into the steam tunnels, and at the same time, they actually pulled one of the skellies out of the jugger, right? And uh, they then interrogate the skelly and ask the skelly. Uh, you know, um, and act, they interrogate the Skelly, and they get the following information. They get the information that the dropship that has brought this invasion force, uh, they have 72 hours before they report back to the Sunax, right? And they will report back that uh, the Sunax can send all of their, um, can, can actually send in the mining equipment, or they'll report back that things have gone poorly and they need additional invasion forces, right? So, uh, and then, uh, so the players, uh, they've stripped the juggers that they destroyed for equipment. And one of the things they realize is that the juggers are each carrying a repulsor, uh, uh, a jump repulsor, right? So what they do is they, they actually go out and they get, uh, they actually destroy 12 juggers, right? Get the jump repulsor from each one of those and then uh, gear up, you know, so there's kind of a montage of them getting all their gear set, and they use the jump repulsors to actually go up toward um, the, uh, to actually go, to actually fly into the, you know, one mile into the air, and actually enter into the, um, the dropship, right? Now, the Rebel, GX-5, the Sunax Rebel, the, the AI-hosted drone that is with them, uh, is really integral into helping them with this, right? Uh, in addition, the mechanic George has been studying the uh, the inter you know the interfaces with um, has been studying the interfaces for uh, the Sunax and gets everything set and actually prepares uh, and 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 makes sure that he's going to be able to interface with the ship system when they get the, when they get up to the top of the uh, of the when they get to the dropship itself. So at this point, they all take off. They go uh, uh, actually from the ground. They, they use the jump repulsors. Now, I did explain that, like, because, uh, you know, they could be inter they could be found out before they actually reach the ship. Even if they're found out, the ship would, uh, you know, would bear its guns down on them. They might actually, um, they might actually send out some, some tanks outside. Actually, the tanks can't operate right outside the dropship, so it would just be the, the ship's guns. But I did explain it would be incredibly dangerous. And so just the, the point from going from TC-337 surface to one mile up to the dropship, uh, we, what we did with that was we actually, every single person at the table rolled a D20, and if they, ro if they rolled, and there was no pluses, it was just if you rolled a one, your character, that's it no longer, you know, they're out, right, so essentially they would have, uh, they would have passed in the attempt, you know, passed away in the attempt, so, uh, so we actually, you know, we made the roll, nobody rolled a one, right, uh, but, you know, basically, you know, still, you know, uh, and actually they took Bearcat, so there was 12, you know, there was four PCs and eight non-player characters, one tactical team invading the dropship, incredibly dangerous, right, when they get up there, they go to an iris uh, opening, which was actually opened for them by one of GX's five. Uh, GX five had four allied traders, you know, Sunax traders. So it's saying rebels. That's the correct term. Uh, so there were there were four other rebels on the ship, and only GX five had come down. Uh, they opened up this iris uh, entrance so they could all come in. They came in. Uh, they encountered two um, Sunax tanks in the tunnels. Uh, of the um, in the essentially in the tunnels of the dropship, and they got the <coughs> excuse me the mechanic into position, and he made his rolls and actually uh, programmed the ship to fly back out um, into into essentially low TC three set three three seven orbit into low orbit around the planet. <coughs> but there was a, a line of debris. And he actually, um, so essentially, he put the the pilot, uh, the ship on autopilot, and steered it toward the debris. And then at the last moment, they actually jumped back out of the ship when there was still enough atmosphere, and then used their jump repulsors to get back down to TC three three seven. There was another, uh, there was another required, um, yeah, 
Runehammer Games uh, Index Card RPG 2E Death Roll there. Uh, and again, uh, one of, you know, uh, the only, the biggest thing that is really good about the death rolls within, um, within Runehammer Games, uh, ICP, uh, index card RPG 2E with the death saves is that, uh, it really requires the other player characters to be on their toes to watch and be there for recovery. And they're, they're aiding one another very, you know, very, uh, the attentiveness to, to aiding your other player characters is very, very high. So essentially, at this point, so it so that session ended with all the players' characters successfully routing the dropship into um, the uh, the debris band that was around TC, the essentially a, like an asteroid belt, uh, kind of meteorite sized chunks that surrounded TC three three seven, and so the dropship was destroyed before it was able to send a signal out, and and all of the player characters were able to get back down onto the surface. Uh, it was a really fantastic game. We, we really had a blast. Um, and actually, one thing that was really great was um, everybody was, was down to, to run some more sessions. Uh, we actually are thinking about running two more sessions added to this, so it's turned into a mini campaign, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, it's really, it's really uh, I really can't say enough about Runehammer Games, Bearca uh, their battle worlds. Uh, so far, there's been Blood and Snow, uh, Xeno, uh, I think it's um, Xeno Zone. And uh, Relics of Odium are all absolutely fantastic. Bearcats is really amazing. Uh, I'm really amazed that product is only $7.50. Uh, and it's really incredible because I, I really feel like I've had a lot more fun with that $7.50 40-page add-on than I really have for games that I've played, that I've paid, you know, five to six, seven times for. It's, it's, it's an incredible value. Uh, I highly recommend uh, Runehammer Games Bearcats, and that was our plus one for the Runehammer Bearcats uh, for the Runehammer Bearcats GX5 one shot. Thank you for letting me share this with you today. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.